Okay, we are live on Twitch, I think. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so, what was it? Uh, uh, nine uh, state sympathy in Nidoros, and how much was it in total? It was 15, 18, 18, 18 plus five national assembly seat. We got the high king, the heir, the gotar. I mean, the current government is huge. It's uh, it's larger than, or at least as large as the largest one during Mark IV. Yeah. So uh, very surprised by by uh, your success that it was this this huge. It was accessible. All these new people joined. Honestly, before all these people joined, I was expecting a vote count of about 30 to 37. I figured I could rally 10 to 12 people to support me as their first vote. And I was planning to win this on a second ballot. Flash forward, 50 new people join. Suddenly, by my count, about 30 of them have to have put me as their first choice. And that's uh, very nice to see that they they responded in such a positive way to an actual message being put out there because one of my biggest complaints about sort of elections in democracy has always been it's been very meme based uh, which is fine i love memes as much as the next guy but at the end of the day we're trying to win this game and we need to have people with an actual plan put in or people with an actual firm sort of set of uh, organized running on those skills uh, to make a difference. Uh, great speech. I'm so sorry, but uh, for the first five minutes, you were unfortunately cut off from the stream, so they couldn't uh, could only he hear me. So if you want to repeat any of that, you should do that now. No, campaigning's over. It's time for us to come together and govern. It, it doesn't matter at this point. I'm just happy to be elected do you uh were you at all surprised at the the populist party's roaring success in this election because you guys cleaned up yourselves quite a bit uh, i mean um two seats was the expectation i think uh, we thought it was possible to get two seats but then, with a huge influx of uh, newcomers, uh, I mean, I, we didn't expect that to so many to come. And uh, well, we we were prepared uh, to to maybe get a third seat. I mean, that was in the back of our minds that we could get one, and we got one. So. Uh, I mean, it wasn't impossible, but we actually did it, and. Uh, we did beca become the largest party in Nidoros, actually. So that was uh, pretty great. I guess, as a follow-up, what is your plan to retain sort of the voters who have joined, right? We have 50 new people in the community. These are people who are presumably not going to stay independent forever, right? They're going to join a party. How are you going to bring them into your party and get them involved? Well, I hope uh, direct democracy uh, will appeal to them because in other parties, um, well, I mean, other parties can have some form of. Well, yeah, maybe you probably didn't hear that, but uh, what they were saying was that um, I think uh, direct democracy is appealing, and then uh, other parties may have some form of direct democracy as well. But we have it all the time, and it is our purpose. Everything is, every stance is negotiable, uh, except the democracy itself within the party. So, any newcomer can join. They can come with their thoughts, their ideas, and make a uh, argument for it. And sorry, you're you you cut out again. Can you repeat what, that? What the hell? I'm having a push to talk and the damn keyboard. No, I. I... Uh, well, this is the the connection. Or, uh, let me check the stream what they're saying. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, I mean, you're cutting off all two of it. Uh, my cutting off is, I think, connection issue, unfortunately, which is weird because I pay a crap ton of money for the decent internet. Uh, just continue what you were saying. Yeah, so, um, so uh, well, the newcomers can... Yeah, I think it might be on my end. I don't, don't got that much internet. Well, those in the chat can can hear me, but uh, it might be too much load on on uh, the the internet that uh, only my sound is getting out while he's uh, uh, well, it can't reach my computer and and back again. So we only hear my vo voice fine. Uh, anyway, my point was that. Uh, that uh, well any newcomer can come and join our party and they can make an argument for an ID they have and try to push that as the uh, party's uh, policy and um, they might do that in other parties but other parties have a focused like the monarchist party you can't just join the monarchist party and advocate a republic for instance uh, you can't uh, join the theocrats and advocate uh, secularity it doesn't work so uh, but in our party that's fine anyone can enter and you get influence all the term all the time across all the term so i'm cutting out again so um, no I, I think i think you're fine yeah so um, so in other parties you, you vote for them they get the representative power. Maybe direct democracy is a part of those parties and you get to influence how your representative vote. But in our party, direct democracy is the entire point. So our, so our representatives vote according to how our members feel all the time. And you can affect how they vote all the time. So uh, the beginning, the middle and the end of a term you can affect how they vote, not just voting a politician at right. the start and at the start of each term, but you can influence all across the term. So I think that would be appealing to a newcomer that you just doesn't vote once a month and then just wait around, maybe get the party membership, maybe get some influence in that party, but in our party you're guaranteed to vote on every issue since that's uh, our party's entire point well so this is this is why I, I run as an independent office because I don't want to be tied down to somebody else's party ideology and that's why I don't form a party either right I don't want to tie people into to my way of thinking uh, do you do you think that there are parties that would benefit from maybe opening up a more reasonable sort of party uh, dialogue where they allowed more input from new people into their party, especially with all the new people joining DCIV, what party would benefit the most from allowing the newest of new people to sort of have a say in their platform with maybe just sort of a guiding structure of what the platform should be? Well, I think... Democracorp would benefit the most since they didn't grow during this election. They didn't attract newcomers and if they want to stay relevant and not... I, I, I would actually argue against that. I think uh, Democracorp didn't grow because Democracorp is sort of something that's going to become a failed idea within the next couple of election cycles. People have sort of gotten wise to the idea that Democracorp isn't just giving people democratic representation like your party does inside the party, but actually sort of a system where party insiders get more influence. So I, I guess you're right in some sense. They would help to, to it would help them to let new people sort of have more influence. But I think the, the fundamental principles behind Democracorp prevent that at, an, at a level where I, I don't see it happening realistically. Yeah, I, I think uh, that was uh, the primary reason why they didn't 
well along with the propaganda against them but that they didn't increase was that it's kind of an elitist party that have an established shareholder culture and uh, the same people that have been there month after month wait you didn't hear that right so they have this uh, established shareholder uh, culture where the same people month after month has uh, been in the party uh, in democracorp and uh, it's kind of an um, elitist feeling and new people aren't both aren't that welcome by the party perhaps and doesn't feel welcome by the party because it's this uh, deep system where you have to be pretty knowledgeable about how uh, decoins work how to use them how to use the voting system is probably a bit a lot too complex for a newcomer and that uh, didn't work in their favor. And um, yeah. I've spent a lot of time trying to understand both the currency system of D Corp and the philosophy of it. And as full disclosure, I do run a casino. I have my own currency that I'm I'm, I'm working on as a, a community project. Uh, but it's sort of it's a little it feels a little bit different the way that i do that versus the way that they do it where for me it's not a political thing at this point it's truly just a let's try to come up with something that works that the community can use but i from what i understand about their currency system it doesn't mesh with their philosophy because their philosophy is it's an internal party thing but anybody can own decoin like i'm a i'm a i'm not a member of decorp but when I, because I run the casino, I own a large amount of decoin in order to facilitate sort of trades between the two currencies. I think I own 15 plus decoin at this point, and like I could push that to 20, 25 if I really tried hard to, to, to buy it up. So it, I see this, I see this sort of contradiction between their philosophical argument that they are an internal thing and isolated, and the reality of anybody can own this currency and anybody can can sort of use it to buy votes you know what i mean yeah i mean if it was just an an internal currency it wouldn't be that much different from the populist party because we give each of our members a vote in the democracy corp system a vote uh, instead of a vote like in the populist a decoin is a vote if that was only distributed uh, internally, but it isn't, so anyone can make use of the system if uh, decoins go outside the party. And that um, that, uh, that changes the entire, well, the, the entire uh, situation uh, regarding uh, Democracorp. It just isn't this internal fun thing for them to do. It's it's bound to affect the entire game and uh, with the side effect of uh, of allowing facilitating corruption. And I think that's uh, that's that's the part they have to be accountable for. That uh, they they um, we have to, to restrict that because if it was internal, that's fine. But it isn't, and uh, I mean, if if there is a currency for uh, for a casino, that's also fine. But this is a currency that can be used by votes, and that's that's where I draw so, the line. So let's turn away from D Corp because otherwise it's going to feel like we're we both have very vocal issues on this, and so let's turn away from it and not uh, attack them too much. What what do you think happens with the extra NA seat, the National Assembly seat? Who do you think is the early front runner to sort of uh, sweep it up? Because I I I've got money on Joe Parrish myself at this point. I haven't heard much from Joe really, so I couldn't. Uh couldn't uh, make a comment about him i don't th- i don't know actually because we only had four candidates <coughs> candidates and uh, if we had uh, more people willing if we had more people willing to to compete for the seat we would have gotten that already so well joe was there so he couldn't run for na 
so maybe he does now when it's not running for air. Uh, but I don't know uh, about other parties. That uh, well, so I I I have encouraged at this point Joe to run. <laughs> um, the NA we have to actually elect a person as a community to that sort of body, right? So. I, I think Joe runs. I'm hoping a few new people sort of run against him, and um, I guess I think what Joe tried to do as heir inside of his heir campaign with uh, the monarchists to sort of unite the government is I think it's a noble thing. I think it's a good thing to bring into the government more. If the populists are able to work side by side with the monarchists and the theocrats and the pirates, I think that benefits us more than anything else. So I, I think that is sort of what I'd like to see come out of the NA seat. Somebody who does that, whether it's Joe or somebody else, I, I'll, I'll be neutral. I mean, if you manage to pull off um, a personal campaign for him as this uh, great unifier and and uh, advocating uh, cooperation between the parties and getting together and not, not as uh, sorry for bringing them up again democracy corp that has been abstaining half the sessions and he actually contributes and votes and uh, having good faith against the, the other parties i think uh, he could win, and I don't see who his rivals are currently. So he's a, f- a front runner and maybe only candidate to to um, declare his or interest in running them so far. I mean, I hope he's not the only candidate, right? Uh, there really should be a few of the new people who just joined running. Ideally. Uh, What do you make of the fact that the Church of Norway, Gothar, head of the church position, ran unopposed again? Is this a position we really need in the government if nobody's ever running for it? You're talking about the NA seat. No, no, well, I, I switched topics. The Gothar seat that has run unopposed at least two elections in a row that I remember. Yeah, that, that, uh, I mean, I mean, making it an eternal uh, party position for the theocrats and in comparison to now, I don't think it would make any difference. Any difference? Wait, is, is it cutting off again? Uh, my point was making the Gothar into an internal party position of the theocrats in comparison to now. I don't think that would be create much of a difference. And I don't think many people, except those true Democrats, would uh, complain about not being able to challenge uh, the candidate. But who else is running or is interested in running, really? I mean, that's a good point. Uh, for for all the contributions I try to make to the church, I don't I don't think I want the, the leadership position. I don't know what we could do to get more people to want that position. Uh, but, you know, trying to keep things on sort of the topic of the current election results, that's... It's, it's disheartening to see an uncontested election anywhere inside our government, whether it's Yarl of Odin, Yarl of Russia... Or, you know, any other of the Jarl positions that were uncontested. Uh, it really, I think, the best thing we could do is get the new people involved to run for those positions uh, next election around. Because otherwise, we're going to wind up with the same issues we had previously of just the same people running for the same posts, more or less unopposed, and, and not a lot of actual debate and sort of discourse of uh, ideas inside the, the election cycle. So an, an idea I had just uh, right now was that perhaps instead of a single leader, Gothar, 
maybe we could uh, in the spirit of cooperation maybe have each party send their own representative to church and uh, collectively make decisions instead to engage more people in the church I, I think that's a great idea actually uh, if we had the church sort of run somewhat differently where uh, the leadership was was maybe not party leadership, but more than just one person where parties could sort of nominate people or there was some nomination process outside of a general election. I, I think that would help the church to sort of have more engagement because right now we don't have engagement in the church. But that's actually a big part of the game, right? Like one of my platform points was winning based on sort of a religious victory. Yet I think most people don't understand how religious victory works, and sit, or most of the people who I, I assumed I would be speaking to didn't understand how religious victory would necessarily work in Civ Six. I don't know what the new voters think, so maybe they do, but yeah, about uh, information or perhaps the lack of it. Do you think we need a sort of new democracy of university to teach the newcomers how the mechanics of the game work and how the mechanics of the, the meta game works as well? Well, so I, I, I actually the other night uh, I got I got kind of drunk and I started a new uh, democracy of university by pinging uh, espresso who was sort of the original democracy of university person so now there is the unnamed democracy of uni which hasn't really taken off yet but it has a handful of people who sort of know the laws and the constitution and uh are willing to teach new people uh arch wizard is part of it espresso is part of it uh espresso wrote our constitution of course uh, Retro is in it, Jews is in it, I'm um, in it, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that sort of fills that void of, uh, it, it used to be MLU, right, Meyer Law University, the uh, Mark II, Mark III university that would teach new people the Constitution, if nothing else, by forcing them to read it and sort of answer questions about it. But it's not clear that that's going to be a success yet, where I... I pushed for that while, you know, <laughs> I did the Ken Lane thing. I got a little bit drunk, and then I basically said, we're going to force this to happen inside the community because it's good for the community, and I'm not totally sure how much follow-through I need to do yet to make it work, and I'm not sure how much follow-through is going to happen based on the people that are there to help make it work. So hopefully it does. If anybody out there is listening and wants to be a part of that, wants to get lessons from that, you know, uh, Ping, one of the people I mentioned, or myself, and I'm sure we can send you an invite and get you involved. Yeah. Sounds good. So, is there anything else you would like to discuss, or should we end it here? I think we're at a good point for ending it. We've pretty much covered the whole election at this point. Yeah, so, uh, good luck on your new job as High King and uh, to me as uh, party leader of a free seats party needle I guess. Uh, thank you. I am going to need all the luck I can get with an 18 member uh, state assembly. Good luck running your party. Good luck uh, keeping sort of them all in line and keeping uh, your SA presence as strong as it should be. I look forward to working with you going forward. Yeah, thank you, and thanks everyone for watching today. And that's it, and see you next time. See you next time, guys. Goodbye.